Hey everybody. Today we're talking about logistic regression, which is used to model binary outcomes, where there's two possible things that can happen with your response variable, success or failure. Some examples where logistic regression might apply would be disease diagnosis, where you either have it or you don't, voting, where you either vote for or against a thing, or college admissions, where you either get in or you don't. And the example I'm going to use throughout this vid actually has to do with college admissions. Here's a typical plot. You've got a bunch of students with different GPAs, in this case ranging from about 2 to about 4. Some get in, some don't. Students with higher GPAs tend to get in at a higher rate than those with lower GPAs. Clearly, this is a bad candidate for linear regression. I've gone ahead and put a regression line on here. Obviously, it's a terrible fit. Also, if you look at the extreme ends for very low and very high GPAs, you can see that this regression line is predicting some ridiculous values, values less than zero or greater than one. And those values don't even make sense if you consider um, admission as sort of a percent chance of being admitted. Speaking of which, if you bin the explanatory variable, which is in this case GPA, and then compute proportions of success in the response variable, that doesn't help as much as you might like. So I've taken the data from that last slide and binned the GPAs um, in increments of 0.1, so 2, 2.1, 2.2, and so on. And then I've computed proportions of acceptance for each of those different bins. And here's a visualization of that data. You could put a regression line over that, and it would look a little better than the thing in the previous slide, but it's not going to capture the true pattern here. What we'd really like is to get a model that captures this distinctive S shape that we have in this example and many others like it. Where as the explanatory variable increases, the response variable either increases or decreases from 0 to 1 with asymptotes at each of those y values. The logistic model is designed to fit this sort of data. In its simplest form, like what we're considering here where we have just one explanatory variable, it looks like this. The logit of p, the probability of success, or being admitted in this case, is um, then has a linear relationship, beta naught plus beta 1x. Again, p is the expected probability of success, x is the value of the explanatory variable. And in this case, beta naught and beta 1 are unknown coefficients that have to be estimated using the data. The logit function is invertible, and so that model can be written like this p equals e to the power beta naught plus beta 1x over 1 plus e to the power beta naught plus beta 1x. I have a whole video on the logit function. I'll throw a link up top. If you're curious about that function or trying to build some intuition into it, I recommend checking that out. You have to fit the, the model that I showed on the previous slide using maximum likelihood estimation, and that can be a bit of a bear. Essentially what you're doing is writing the joint probability function for the data that you have um, with unknown parameters beta naught and beta 1 and then considering it as a function of those unknown parameters beta naught and beta 1. You differentiate with respect to beta naught and beta 1 typically after taking a logarithm, set those equal to 0, optimize using multivariable calculus. Uh, you don't want to do that by hand. Typically you do it with technology in R, the code looks like this. The basic command you're using is GLM. I'm going to do a whole video on this up next, um, doing logistic regression in R. I'll go into this in a lot more detail. Using R or other technology, you get these estimators for that college example. In this case, beta naught hat, the sort of intercept term, is negative 12.04. And beta 1 hat, the kind of slope term, is 4.08. Plugging those in, we get this model. You give me the GPA of a student, I'll give you the probability of them getting accepted into this college. If we plot this curve, we get a pretty good fit to our data. Here I've shown the fit with the um, points representing those proportions of observed successes. For instance, this model predicts that a student with a 2.7 GPA has a 26.4% chance of being accepted. And I got that number just by plugging in 2.7 to the equation at the top of this slide. Now, the coefficients in your logistic regression model are harder to interpret than the corresponding coefficients in a linear regression model. So here we're really asking the question, what do beta naught and beta 1 mean here? 
A one unit increase in x corresponds to an increase of beta one in the logit of p, which we can interpret as the log odds of success. I have a whole video on odds and log odds, and rather odds and odds ratios. I'll throw that up top. That might help build some intuition there as well. But fundamentally, and I think even more intuitively, beta one is just affecting the steepness of the logistic curve. If beta one is greater than zero, then the curve is gonna be increasing from zero to one, from you know, around zero towards one. And if beta one is less than zero, then it's gonna be decreasing. Moreover, at the 50% point on the graph, the slope of the logist logistic regression curve is beta one over four. By the 50% point on the graph, I mean where the um, response variable proportion is at 50%. And I've represented it here with a dotted line and you can see it's halfway up the graph vertically. The coefficient beta naught on the other hand, the sort of intercept term, is affecting the horizontal placement of the curve, how far left and right it goes. At that 50% point on the graph, where that dotted line is above, the value of the explanatory variable, the x value, which in this case is GPA, is negative beta naught over beta one. And so for this example, we can compute it because beta naught was negative 12.04, beta one was 4.08, according to our fit that we got using R, saying that, um, the grade point average of 2.95 corresponds to a 50% acceptance rate. And you can verify that visually on that plot there. Now there are a lot of important differences between logistic regression and linear regression. It's not so simple as just applying the logit function to your probabilities. I wanna highlight two important differences right now. First, remember that your response variable is binary. And that means that there aren't residuals in the same sense. We can't make residual plots and we can't compute residual standard error. When we're doing logistic regression, we're gonna to have to find some sort of stand in for those two important um, ideas. Secondly, and I think related to the first bullet point, but a bit more general, there's no normal distribution in a logistic model. At every X value, the distribution of the response variable is binomial. Not normal, like in a, um, a regression line. Among other, among other things, this means that placing a confidence band around the logistic model is going to require some careful thought. We're going to get into all of this in future videos.